Hello and welcome. My name is Luca Canali and my presentation today is about monitoring Apache Spark 3.x on Kubernetes using metrics and plugins. I work for CERN as a data engineer with the data analytics and database services. I'm passionate about methods and tools for measuring and improving performance of data platforms. We will cover today Apache Spark monitoring ecosystem, Spark metric system, Spark 3 plugins, metrics for Spark on Kubernetes and cloud storage, and you'll see how you can run a Spark performance dashboard. As Spark users, we care about performance at scale. The key to good performance is to run good execution plans and make sure to remove serialization points and bottlenecks in general. To do that, we need instrumentation, data and tools that allow to investigate and find bottlenecks in the workload. Apache Spark monitoring ecosystem. Let's have a quick recap. The web UI is the first entry point to Spark instrumentation with details on jobs, stages, tasks, SQL, streamings, etc. The REST API and the, and the programmatic Spark Listener API expose task metrics and executor metrics, which are also very useful for troubleshoot. And then there is the Spark metric system, which is the instrumentation we are going to use in the rest of this talk. Spark metrics are emitted from the driver, the executors, and other components into configured things. There are several things available, as we will see. Metrics are many and varied. They cover many details related to, related to Spark execution. For example, number of active tasks, jobs and stages completed and failed, executor CPU, runtime, garbage collection, shuffle metrics, IO metrics, and memory metrics. If you want to explore the Spark metrics system, you can use the web UI servlet sync. Metrics are made available in JSON format and are particularly useful when running in local mode. This also comes with experimental support for a Prometheus. The JMX sync allow for more flexibility. For example, you can explore metrics using JConsole and use other tooling for JMX. In the rest of this talk, we will discuss the Spark metrics system in the context of a a Spark uh, monitoring pipeline. This slide provides the architecture overview. The Spark driver and executors collect the workload metrics and sync them to a graphite endpoint in an InfluxDB instance. Metrics are then visualized using custom Grafana dashboards that read from InfluxDB. This is how you can configure the metric system to sync into a graphite endpoint. You simply edit metrics.properties file there is an alternative. You can use the spark.metrics.conf parameters as highlighted in the slide. One of the key advantages of building dashboards is the possibility to visualize metrics as a function of time. This slide shows two particularly important metrics. Number of active tasks is useful as it shows how much Spark is able to parallelize the workload and to highlight areas when this does not happen which could be because of long tails, stragglers, partition skew, insufficient partitioning, and several other reasons. CPU usage by executors is also very important to understand how the workload is utilizing the underlying platform. Spark is widely used in cloud environments. There is a need for improved instrumentation in such cases. Rather than adding this instrumentation into Spark core, Spark 3 offers new opportunities with the Spark plugins interface. In this, course, in this uh, talk, we will discuss plug plugin metrics for Spark on Kubernetes, where you can measure pods resource usage and also plugin instrumentation for cloud file systems. This slide provides an overview of Spark plugins in the context of metrics extensions. Plugins allow to run user provided code at the start of the executors. The plugin code can interact with external packages and register metrics that will flow towards the sync together with the rest of the Spark metrics. This effectively extends the Spark metrics system. This is how the Spark plugin API works. You can create your custom class extending Spark plugin and use metric registry from the plugin context to register the metrics of interest. In this example, a very basic one, the plugin metric simply reports a constant value. If you want to experiment with Spark plugins, you may want to head to the repository shown in this slide and run these two basic plugin examples. To do that, you just need to add a package and a configuration parameter. 
Here is an example of a more interesting plugin that you might find useful when running Spark on Kubernetes. The plugin reads uh, workload data from C-group instrumentation and emits metrics with the pod resource usage. This is how you can use it in the slide. The metrics reported by this plugin are CPU, memory, and network I.O. Measuring CPU usage this way is useful as it gives information on CPU use by the JDM and possibly other components running in the pod, for example, Python UDF when using PySpark. Network throughput metrics are also quite useful as they give information on remote I.O. and shuffle workload. Another plugin that you might find useful allows to measure cloud file systems, such as S3 or any other Hadoop compatible file system. The metrics reported are byte thread, byte written, read ops, and write ops. And this is how you can configure the plugin. That is to say that there is a bit of complexity in setting up the infrastructure for a Spark dashboard. The repository mentioned in this slide provides code and examples that you can use to get started. You can run the instrumentation on a Docker container, which takes care of configuring InfluxDB and comes with pre built Grafana dashboards. You can find at this repository also the details on how to install the dashboard using a Helm chart. This is a recap of the provided tooling for a Spark plugin instrumentation on Kubernetes and Cloud File systems. There is a package that you can use and a configuration that you need to set if you want to use these plugins. In this slide, you can see how you can put all this together in an example. You can run the Docker container with the infrastructure, and then you can run your Spark shell, Spark Summit, or PySpark with the uh, additional instrumentation that will uh, show up in the dashboard. The dashboard allows to visualize Spark metrics stored into InfluxDB. It can be used for real-time monitoring or to explore historical data. The metrics are many. Only a few are shown in the provided dashboards. You can see gauges that summarize metrics across time intervals, and other graphs represent metrics as a function of time. The final goal of this exercise is to feed monitoring data into performance troubleshooting and root cause analysis. An additional piece of configuration is about the dashboard annotations. Annotations allow to, uh, to link uh, data about the start and end time for job ID, stage ID, and SQL ID to the graphs in the dashboard. This is how you can configure it. And now a short demo of the Spark Performance Dashboard. This demo will show you how to run a performance dashboard for Apache Spark. We will use the tooling and instructions available at the repository shown in the video. First, a quick recap of the architecture. Spark driver and executors collect workload metrics and sync them to a graphite endpoint into an influx DB instance. Metrics are visualized using Grafana dashboards that read from InfluxDB. The dashboard infrastructure components, namely InfluxDB and Grafana, we run in a Docker container that you can start as highlighted here. I've added additional configuration to the Spark jobs used for this demo to configure where and how to sync the metrics. You can see the configuration highlighted here and also added additional configuration for annotation for query job and stage ID start time. I've used plugins uh, from the repository shown here to extend Spark instrumentation with metrics for Kubernetes and Cloud file systems. Spark plugins require additional configuration as shown in the repository here. Here you can see one of the provided dashboards. In the background, Spark 311 with 12 executions on a, Kuber on a Kubernetes cluster is running the TPCDS benchmark at scale 1,500. Use the dropdown to select the user and application ID you want to monitor. During this demo, you will see real-time data refresh every 10 seconds. The controls on the top right of the dashboard allow you to change the time interval and the refresh rate. The first set of gauges that we want to look at show cumulative values for metrics of interest, such as task runtime, CPU usage, garbage collection, metrics for tasks and jobs, details, metrics for uh, the memory usage, metrics for I.O. This gauge here shows the uh, number of active tasks that is, uh, that is at the current uh, moment in time. 
Graphs of matrix values as a function of time are useful to understand how the workload evolves. Number of active tasks is particularly important as it shows you how Spark is able to parallelize the workload and to highlight periods of time where this doesn't happen, which could be due to long execution tails, stragglers, suboptimal partitioning, partition skew, and several other causes. As you can see, as I hover on top of the graphs, the details of the matrix values per executor appear. CPU usage is also very important to understand how the workload evolves. Garbage collection is shown here. This graph summarizes how the executor task runtime breaks down in terms of CPU usage, garbage collection, serialization, also uninstrumented time, which is typically I.O. and other components. We have here a metrics about the memory usage. You can see JVM on hip memory, then a unified memory in Spark, divided in executor, execution and storage memory. Then there is the driver memory here. Then you have metrics for Spark I.O., HDFS I.O., and Shuffle I.O. An additional set of metrics that is very useful uh, for uh, running Spark on Kubernetes comes from the plugin instrumentation with C groups. Uh, this graph shows the CPU used uh, measured directly from the pods. Here you would see the uh, CPU used by Spark, and in case we were using PySpark, that would also be displayed here. Then you have uh, the metrics for network um, bytes that come into the pods. This includes the I.O. Uh, reads that we are doing and also uh, part of the shuffle. You can see here, and this is a network uh, bytes that go out, also contains part of the shuffle and data transfer towards the, uh, the driver from the executors. And we have metrics for uh, memory. An additional set of metrics are about the cloud storage. If you're using, for example, S3 or any other Hadoop compatible file system, you can uh, measure here the uh, the throughput in terms of bytes read and written and uh, read and write operations. I want to show you an additional instrumentation that has to do about uh, with annotations. Here we can see what, when the queries are have started for the, for example, the last interval of 15 minutes. The last query that started and we are measuring is query 99. So we can go to the uh, web UI and see the details of the query 99 here is the plan. This makes a link between the uh, dashboard instrumentation and the standard web UI instrumentation. This ends our short tour of the Spark dashboard. I hope you find this useful and I wish you good luck with your Spark performance troubleshooting. I hope you enjoyed the demo. As an advanced topic, I'd like to mention this, that Spark plugins and the metric system allow to instrument custom code and libraries. As an example, this slides details how we instrumented the read time for S3, HDFS, CERN EOS file system for a benchmark that we did across various file systems available here at CERN. To do that, we use the infrastructure of Spark plugins and the metric system and some custom code that you can find linked in the slide. Just before our conclusions, I would like to share some of the lessons learned developing and running this type of infrastructure for a couple of years at CERN. So one of the things that we do is that we provide the Spark dashboard as an optional configuration for the CERN Jupyter-based data analysis platform. So users are able to select this type of instrumentations if they want to. Um, this also works nice and fine, but there is to say that there is a cognitive load to understand the available metrics and the troubleshooting process. So in practice, users um, do this type of troubleshooting together with uh, experts from the Spark service. An additional technical point is that we set data retention. In general, we pay attention not to overload InfluxDB with too much data. Another point that I want to bring up is the, about Spark development in general for this infrastructure. For example, and more things can be done. It's still not a complete uh, job. A native InfluxDB sync will be quite useful. At the moment, we are using a graphite sync, and then uh, InfluxDB 1.x can pick it up but it would be nice to have um, a, a native uh, sync or maybe also Prometheus sync. Also, Spark is not fully instrumented. A few areas are yet to cover, for example, instrumentation of IO and the Python UDF runtime. This brings me to our conclusions and this, that Spark metrics and the dashboard provides extensive performance monitoring data 
They are a nice complement to the web UI when doing performance troubleshooting. Spark plugins introduced in Spark 3.0 make it easy to augment Spark metric system. For example, we have seen in this talk plugins to monitor Spark on Kubernetes and Cloud File System Integration. You can get started building and using a Spark performance dashboard based on InfluxDB and Grafana with the tooling that was shown in this uh, presentation and the demo. I hope this motivates you also to build your own plugins and dashboards and also share your experience. I would like to thank all the people that made uh, this work possible. I, I also put some link here in the slide and I would like to thank you all for your attention.